you are here today with Mimi's house and um, today I want to share some information with you about aprons. I wear an apron usually when I start cooking because that's when I get messy and I know that I'm messy and I spill stuff and instead of getting it all over my clothes that's what I do is just wear an apron. So I'm going to show you some of my aprons but first I wanted to share with you how aprons came about and um, where they began. And I thought this was really interesting that the word started out as napron with an N, the letter N in front of that and spelled a little bit different. And it's a medieval French word. And actually, it's a derivative from the word nape, which means a tablecloth. And so what they did was used a small tablecloth to cover a bigger tablecloth to protect the large one because that's the one they wanted to keep nice, kind of like we do with wearing an apron to protect our clothes. So in, later on in the 14th century, the apron shows up in the English language and people thought that they were saying an apron. And so this is why now the word has transformed into just apron. <laughs> so I thought that was was really really interesting on how that all came about and how long that aprons have been around. Um, nobility usually did not wear aprons but the changing of the fashions started including fancy aprons and even women who wore fancy um, gowns, ladies gowns, wore some kind of aprons. And then fashions continue to change as they, as they do. And in the 1600s, aprons had become very ornate, which is fancy. And they had embroidery on the body part of the apron and on the ties. But they, overall, they were pretty strictly only around, they only tied around the waist and, <clears throat> excuse me, and the apron part was just on the lower half of the body. And then when aprils traveled to the New World and pilgrim women um, first started to consider them, why they kept things very simple and while Quaker women allowed colorful silk aprons. <clears throat> Charles II in England took the throne and Louis VII ruled. Aprons became competitively fashionable and one even reported to cost the equivalent of over 32 thousand dollars. That's a lot of big bucks. Well, by the 1700s, pinner aprons became popular. And that style was tied at the waist, but then there was an upper part that covered from the waist up, and pinner got the name because they would pin each corner of the top of the apron because they hadn't thought, I guess, yet of somehow to make ties or to go around them. So then as the popularity increased in the mid-1800s and westward expansion and the Civil War introduced shoulder straps for uh, utility for the for the apron and then by the Victoria era 
women were using aprons for both utility and fashion and women's magazines and pattern companies we did used to have companies who made patterns for clothes and they made patterns for aprons and they began um, making and offering these patterns for for these garments then in the 1920s and 30s why there were companies who made flour flour like you bake with and in the packaging of the flour why they introduced the sacks of the held the flour as material that women could use to make aprons and, and other garments too. And so most of the aprons were used and used up and some vintages of styles can still be found, but they're probably copies. Um, in the 1940s, aprons were becoming a fashion statement and the they were pictured by the patterning pattern companies for wearing over plain looking dresses to really make the dresses look more fashionable. So um, that's a little background on it, but the different apron styles was um, one called the pinafore, and that was the original bib style apron, and it covered the chest. And it's the one I shared with you that um, it fastened with pins, and they were called pennies. And it was commonly associated with a ruffled apron on the bottom part. And a lot of times, um, little girls' outfits, they, they wore what was called pinafores. Um, the hostess apron was a 1950s form for a half apron and it was usually a daintier fabric and was made from organdy lace satin um, some kind of cotton silk and it was also a term for an apron that was made to show so it really wasn't for the work part of the apron, but just kind of a foo-foo, frilly part. Or it was also called a cocktail apron or party apron. And then the bib apron, and that was where the top portion, portion covers the chest, and it was just kind of a simple square that it attached to the bottom part of the apron. And then the half apron was just around the waist, and it didn't have any top to it. And then the full apron was used to describe um, an apron that covers the whole front, not a half apron. And a princess apron. I had never heard of a princess apron before, but it's a full apron with a bib and skirt that's cut in one, and it does not have a waist seam to it. And it was very popular in the 1920s and the 1930s. And then something called the smock. And it was more like a dress than an apron. And some of these had sleeves. And um, they were popular. And a lot of times women wore them so that it would protect their clothes if they were even out in the garden. So they wouldn't get dirt and, and everything on their, on their regular clothes. There was a cobbler apron. And this was an apron that covers the front and the back. It's usually straight with ties or buttons at the sides. And that was popular in the 1950s and 1960s. Now, if you've ever gone to a pizza restaurant, why you might have seen a chef wearing an apron. And that's a traditional apron. And it's in one piece with a straight skirt and a bib. And it goes over the head. And then it ties in the back with the ties. 
and it's also called a butcher apron, which um, men who or women who work in the butcher department of the grocery store wear a butcher apron to cover them. And if you think about um, the men who fixed horseshoes and worked as a blacksmith, they wore a heavy leather type apron and that protected their body along with their clothes from um, the fire and the sparks that came from when they were working around the fire. Well, I've got some aprons that, um, these are just some of my aprons. And so I want to show you what, what they are. How would you think? Now this one is the, it's reversible. So this is one side and this is the other side. And it does have a way to go around the neck and it's got the little tab thing that you can keep it right there and it comes up high enough that it um, protects you from a lot of spills. And the next apron is just one that covers the front. Move my chair. <laughs> okay, this fits over the head and it's just like a shirt and it does not have any sides to it but at least it fits and it comes up high so that it protects all the front of you okay here's one that i used to wear a whole lot and i noticed i hadn't pulled it out for a while and i saw that Okay, it's got, you can adjust, this goes over your head, and then you can adjust the strap here to where it might need to feel comfortable. It ties, and obviously I got too close to something and burned a hole in it. <laughs> I haven't fixed it yet, and so it's got, it's still got the tear in it, but that's okay. One of these days I'll find time to do that. <laughs> Okay, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> okay, this is one that's very similar to some of these other, it's over your head, but it is, instead of cloth, it's uh, plastic, and so you can just wipe it off, and it has the tie. Okay, there was one that I couldn't find. I'm not sure. I probably put it at some place where I'd know where it was. And it was one that my mom gave to me for Christmas one year. And it was a Christmas apron. And I think I didn't really want to use it to get it dirty. And so I probably put it someplace where um, it would be kept nice and I haven't seen it. For a while so I'll have to look for that okay this one again is put over your head and ties to the side and you can adjust the bottom part wherever you need to put it around your waist and then I'm messing up my hair putting those on and off aren't I okay this last one is one that I made and you put your arms through, put your head in, and then see it's got a tie, and then you can tie this other side, and sometimes I just leave that open so I can get it on and off, but <clears throat> let me back up so you can see, it's got a chicken on the front of it, and I left this open so it's a big pocket, and if I'm working here in the kitchen, why I can stuff something in there and I've washed it enough that the little chicken's 
beak is kind of coming loose. But you know, that just means that it's one of my favorites and I really like it and it it's a good cover. And I'll show you on the back, I even put a baby chick. <laughs> so, um, and then this is called Rick Rack that goes around the edge. So, um, let me lay that down here for you so you can get a better look at that. But this is a good one because it's not real heavy, but it covers nice and it um, it keeps me protected knowing that I'm the messy person that I am. So I really hope you've had a good time today at Mimi's house and I hope you learned something about aprons. And I'm really hoping to see you tomorrow back at Mimi's house at three o'clock. Bye.